The diagnostic system in orthopedic medicine consists of four steps. Let's imagine a patient comes to us complaining from pain in this area. The very first important question is, where is this pain coming from? Does it have a local origin or does it have a referred origin? In other words, is it a real shoulder problem? Or is it an acromioclavicular problem? Or is it referred from the cervical spine? Is it a nervous problem? Is it an internal derangement? There are so many options. So how do we know the answer to the question, is it local or is it referred? In most cases, we will know that after a specific detailed history taking. Then, of course, we continue with an inspection followed by a functional clinical examination. And very important in the functional examination is to use as less test as possible. We really don't need any artificial hypercomplication. We don't need dozens of tests. We need a few tests, but what is very important, we need a relevant test. What about the intertester and intratester reliability of our test procedures? This is always a very important question. So, what are we going to do? We're going to test every structure separately or every group of structures. And let's imagine, okay, we performed 10 tests or 12 tests, whatever, depending on the region we are testing. And the patient gave some positive answers, he gave some negative answers. Then, of course, we have to interpret the test result. What did we find? Well, that's the second step. We have to make a distinction between, on the one hand, a contractile lesion and, on the other hand, an inert lesion. What is a contractile lesion? Well, we are talking about lesions of muscle belly, musculotendinous junction, the tendon, the insertion. And what are the inert lesions? Well, that's all the rest. Disc, menisc, bursa, ligament, nerves, all this kind of structures. So I would like to make a differentiation between the two groups. Does the patient have a contractile lesion and or an inert lesion? If the patient has an inert lesion, then I ask myself the question, what did I see in the clinical examination? Which pattern did I see? Did I see a capsular pattern or did I see a non-capsular pattern? Well, the capsular pattern is typical for arthrosis, arthritis in a specific joint. What's the difference between the two? Well, the arthrosis, in that case, we're going to have the capsular pattern, a specific limitation of movement in certain directions. I discussed this in other films with a harder end feel. When we talk about an arthritis, then we talk about a muscle spasm end feel. So most likely at this point in the examination, I know which structure or which group of structures is responsible for the complaint. Perhaps I don't necessarily know exactly where. Perhaps I know it is a supraspinatus lesion, but I don't know yet which part of the supraspinatus. In that case, the last stage in the examination is a selective palpation. A selective palpation in a specific structure we are looking for tenderness. But sometimes we even don't need palpation. Uh, sometimes we find in the examination localizing signs. Those are clinical items we find in the examination that point us in the direction of a specific structure, a specific location. For instance, resisted abduction is painful. You think of a supraspinatus lesion, but you also find a painful arc and or end range pain on passive elevation. Well, because of the painful arc or the end range pain on passive elevation, it cannot be the muscle belly of the supraspinatus, it cannot be the tendon of the supraspinatus, it has to be the tenoperiostal part. So the painful arc is a wonderful localizing sign, so we really don't need palpation anymore. This is a general system which we apply for diagnostics in the extremities. In the spine, the system is slightly different which is also logical because those are totally different situations, totally different joints. Mm -hmm.